I just want to give a quick, uh, a deeper dive into the uh, bell housing here with the brush holders. And I saw, saw in the other video, but I was going to do a side-by-side -side comparison between that one and this one. Obviously, there's a stark visual difference. This is just the amount of uh, buildup and, uh, and carbon on it. And uh, this, both of these motors have gone through the same current level. Obviously, this had the uh, arc over event. But so let's dive into it more. So this is what I was showing in the other video. The um, current obviously arced from here. The, there's a field coil that's right about here, close proximity. It's also interesting to see the amount of melting that happens across here. Again, you can see better that that metal bolt there is actually melted, uh, that steel bolt, sorry, is actually melted through. Um, and also looking on the interior, you can see how much that's eroded away. I don't know if that was actually um, going between there and the comm when it, when it uh, all started to go awry, but it's quite unusual. I checked the inside of the case, and I'll show that here in a bit, but there's um, no sign of attaching anywhere other than the field coils and maybe the actual cast iron housing. Um, I looked at the cover that goes here, as well as my CO2 injector, which goes right there, and there's uh, no sign of any arcing to that. It's all in, other than being covered with carbon dust, it's all in great shape. So, um, quite a bit of heat distortion in here, the buildup of copper. Uh, I think the bus bar is coming off, uh, probably did it, but this is also, you can see the amount of erosion that happened to that brush holder. And it is erosion. It's not that it was bent by hitting by a comm bar, um, which is kind of unusual. I'm trying to figure out just got a plasma ball that attached there or uh, something else is going on uh, this is the brush holder opposite of this guy so they're in the same uh, in the same circuit um, yeah so that's this guy here uh, just so people know this is the uh, the older model warp nines had uh, this connection here which were leads that would go to the brush holders for uh, when the brushes would wear down, you could have an indicator that would uh, light up, but uh, not using those, obviously. Um, this is the other brush holder from last year. So this went to, um, this did the 1600 amp run to 150, and uh, the 2300 amp run just after the quarter mile where the, sna the shaft snapped. Everything looks in, uh, in great condition. It's really like new if you had told me this guy had uh, gone more than 2,000 amps. Um, I would have been suspect. There's no sign of any damage whatsoever. Um, everything looks good. And, and just, uh, this is, these are, uh, one thing I want to bring up on both of these is that these are older model Warp 9s. Like, uh, these are probably circa 2008, 2009, if I remember right. Um, they're very early models of the of the Warp 9. They've made significant improvements, or at least some improvements to, to them since then. So this has the 3 8 inch terminals, uh, a slightly different shaft design. Um, so these, these motors have been around, and they're certainly not the uh, latest and greatest to come out of net gain. All right, and this is the uh, arched motor here. Um, this is the field coils. Showed in the previous video, but show closer. I'm gonna actually go through and wash out all the carbon dust as much as I can in here to get a better view. But um, obviously, considerable damage right there. But the the biggest is right here. You can actually see the molten metal there. And I'm not sure if that's actually pretty sure that's just molten copper just built up in there. But you can see in there that the field windings have eroded pretty uh, pretty significantly. Also on the opposite coil, uh, some damage there. Might have built up enough current that it finally arced over to that, but not nearly as bad as uh, the other side there. Also, on this coil, you can see that arc over it occurred between these two coils here and uh, melted this, uh, melted through here and melted through there as well. Uh, inside, there are some fragments of copper just scattered around but uh, looks like that's the the main point I would guess on the current path from brush holder into this coil things got hot enough and then it finally 
arced over to that coil and to that coil to make a return current path. I'll look on the uh, other side to see what uh, what else is uh, melted through and see if there's any other current paths. Actually, yeah, uh, one correction. So I just turned it over here. This is what I was showing in the previous video where the uh, uh, current flowed from the brush holder into the field coil. Um, everything else looks good. Uh, that wire there is uh, for a temperature snap switch. Again, this is an early, really early model of the Warp 9s, back when it still had the um, forklift snap switch. Uh, for long durations, the coils would get hot and get hot enough to close the switch and uh, give an indicator light or turn the system off so that you wouldn't overheat and melt the motors. Uh, really not useful in racing because it takes too long for the heat to really penetrate in there to really do any good. Most of the time it's going to be the comm or the, or the brushes that uh, or you know, goes like this. But So uh, main current path was in here. And you can see it just uh, started melting away at the coils there. But no other damage. Um, hard to say if, if this or the other side, which I'll flip back over just real quick before I wash it off, um, was the cause. So the um, current path from the brush holder to the to, was to this coil here. So the current flew, uh, flowed to this area, and then uh, arced over, or maybe because of it, arced over between the two field coils to uh, complete the circuit. And uh, yeah, it's just a, especially that area there, surprisingly large amount of, of current was flowing through that point. I did look over the armature. Uh, quite well and there's no sign of any damage to the windings on that obviously the uh, commutator was badly damaged so in the previous video but uh, it was not any signs of melting or uh, current arc over between the armature windings and the field windings which isn't surprising all right did a quick uh, quick cleaning doesn't reveal much most of the stuff's just a uh, baked on here due to the high temperature. Uh, one of the things is, this is actually molten uh, iron from the uh, from the casing here. It actually melted a nice big long divot all the way through. I'm gonna pull, the, unbolt the field coils here in just a second. I'm curious if there is a current path. It doesn't feel, I think the insulation is intact under there, but uh, pull it to be sure. So this is the uh, drive end. And again, it has uh, arc over through here into, uh, pretty sure it went into the uh, cast iron housing and then came back out here or vice versa and melted through. And I think most of this is just a uh, residual heat damage or not necessarily a, an actual current path going through, but uh, that copper in there is just uh, chunks of the motor that have become separated from whatever it else was attached to because it was obviously melting quite a bit of carbon. Unceremoniously stripped it down here, pulled it apart, lift everything in the right orientation. Um, as I was talking about before, that's actually erosion uh, that has melted slash vaporized the cast iron housing you can actually see well, well you can see in the video but there's actually a per, you can actually see the perimeter of the field coil etched its way it didn't go beyond that uh, so definitely and then likewise on the other side so definitely it looks like it went from a, a current path from the field coil into the housing and then back out on the other side so it looks like happened and we can bit about which happened first in what order but a current path formed between the brush holder and this field coil here. The current then traveled through the field coil and exited the field coil here, where it didn't, it didn't arc into the next field coil, but rather into the housing. That would be that large crater there. Once that happened, the current flowed through the other side and came out on that side, which is this field coil here. 
and then that coil is this exit here to that terminal which I think is S2 no it is S1 it really matters but and so then that was the return current path so and now it's a pile of copper so that is me tearing it apart and my initial assessment taking it apart. Obviously, I'm going to need to think about more and see if that actually makes sense. If uh, people have other theories, more than happy to hear it. But uh, that's what it seems like initially. Feel free to contact me or throw it in the comments. Because part of doing this is figure out what, uh, what happened and make sure it doesn't happen again. Um,